We know you like a good mystery. Who, when confronted with a puzzle, can't help but try and figure it out? The process can be frustrating, but we usually get there in the end, especially when given some clues. But what if we told you there's a puzzle that exists in this world that just can't be solved and we mean by anyone? That the answer to the riddle has kept some of the brightest minds on planet Earth up nights on end. It's a puzzle that will drive you around the bend, that will draw you in and boggle your brain to the extent of you ending up in a padded cell wishing you would have never looked at the thing. It's the can of worms that has brought men to their knees, and we think it's time you had a look inside. The story of this puzzle goes back to the early 1990s when the Central Intelligence Agency had a new building at their headquarters in Langley, Virginia. The CIA had this new place and they wanted it to look nice. That's why the agency's Fine Arts Commission got to work on decorating the place. A local artist by the name of James Sanborn was commissioned to build a sculpture, but this was going to be no ordinary sculpture. In the spirit of the secrecy of the CIA, this thing was going to be both an artwork and an unfathomable mystery. The sculpture was to be named Kryptos, which is the Greek word for hidden, and that's why these days we have lots of words with crypto in them, and these words usually refer to something secret or hidden. Anyone today can go and have a look at Kryptos, well, if they're allowed in the CIA headquarters, of course. It sits between the courtyard and the cafeteria. It might be a mysterious puzzle, but it's certainly not shrouded in mystery. The artist that was chosen to build the sculpture was known for creating things that made people think about the strange forces of nature, and being a man of high intelligence, he read up on cryptography before starting his design. He also worked with a CIA cryptographer. The sculpture itself is quite beautiful to look at. The materials used were petrified wood, quartz, polished red granite, copper plate, and lodestone. And sure, it's pleasant on the eye, but to most people the code written on it would mean absolutely nothing to them. To some of the world's best cryptanalysts, amateurs, or professionals, it was a huge challenge. Quite literally for some, a challenge of a lifetime. The part of the sculpture that the messages are written on is S-shaped copper screen. There are four encrypted messages in all, and at first glance they obviously have no meaning. All the symbols are from the Latin alphabet, you know, the one we use to write English. Here's an example of part of one of the messages. E M U F P H Z L R F A X Y U. You get the point. We're not going to read the whole thing out. Yeah, it looks a bit harder than your regular puzzle, and that's why ordinary folks likely don't have a chance of cracking it. But it didn't look quite as meaningless to some big brains, and so for years they studied the sculpture and its different messages. One particular man was determined to crack the code, and lucky for him, he worked in the building. This was the CIA analyst named David Stein. Many others tried, but none were as successful as Stein. He didn't use any fancy machinery to solve the puzzle, he just took a paper and a pencil with him to the sculpture. He spent in total about 400 hours over 8 years, and he actually managed to solve 3 of the 4 puzzles. One puzzle is said to be totally unsolvable, but we'll come back to that later. So what did Stein find out? Well, for a while, the CIA kept it a secret. They told him, well done, you are correct, but keep a lid on it. And a year later, they said, okay, you can publish your results in an internal newsletter. But to people like you and I, it remained classified for years to come. Didn't really matter that the CIA kept it a secret, because a computer scientist cracked the three puzzles sometime later. Still, this didn't become public knowledge, or at least the solution didn't. He also kind of cheated because he used a computer. Stein did it with his old school pad and pencil. After the CIA declassified what Stein had found out, the world could read what he said about his seven years with the puzzle. It's quite beautiful how he described the feeling of finally seeing how it all fit together. This is part of what he said. I was hit by that sweetly ecstatic rare experience that I've heard described as a moment of clarity. All the doubts and speculations about the thousands of possible alternate paths simply melted away, and I clearly saw the one correct course laid out in front of me. To solve the first message, he had to use something called a Wiesner cipher. Just explaining how this works is not easy, but we'll give it a shot. We should say that these days you can enter a bunch of jumbled letters into a computer and then try out a bunch of ciphers, but with Stein he had to know the cipher and then work it out on his pad. Ok, so as an example let's show you this. What does that mean? Not much to you we expect, but using the Visionaire cipher it reads, the quick brown fox jumps over 13 lazy dogs. Hey presto, aren't we clever? No, we just found that example on the internet. Not in a million years would we have seen those jumbled words and seen foxes jumping over dogs if we had to work it out for ourselves. 
It works like this. A simple hidden code might just be substituting one letter for another, such as A's are actually B's and D's are actually M's. This level of decoding is pretty simple, and even we could crack a message like that. Once you know the substitution, it's easy to read the full message. Prisoners serving time might write coded messages like this, and prison guards can crack them with ease. Those guys aren't qualified to work at the CIA, though. The difference with the Visionaire cipher is that there are lots of substitution alphabets. One letter isn't always substituted for another, and now it gets hard. There are many different alphabets that are used and they can shift depending on where a keyword is placed. Basically, you have to know how each letter is substituted given that keyword and which alphabet you're using. If that sounds confusing to you, don't worry, it is to everyone. This is what the Visionaire cipher looks like in all those different alphabets. The solution to the first message on the sculpture actually spelled this sentence. Between subtle shading and the absence of light lies the nuance of illusion. To solve the second puzzle, he couldn't use the same Visionaire cipher. Instead, another kind of formula was used and that was a coordinate system called an abscissa. It's like a graph with an axis, so Stein could look at the scrambled message and using this picked out the right letters. He also had to know a keyword. Part of the solution read, it was totally invisible. How's that possible? They used the Earth's magnetic field for X. The information was gathered and transmitted underground to an unknown location X. Does Langley know about this? When you read the full text, you get the coordinates 38 degrees, 57 minutes, 6.5 seconds north, 77 degrees, 8 minutes, 44 seconds west. And that is somewhere in the headquarters at Langley. The third part of the puzzle was solved using something called a transposition cipher. This kind of cipher doesn't substitute one letter for another in an alphabet, but the letters are arranged so that if you use a key, you can spell a word. You have to find the right key. An example would be you see a bunch of letters that are scrambled, but you know if you move three places to the left, four places down, and two more right, up and down, and then back again, you'll get the next letter. The problem is there are lots of different transposition ciphers. Stein figured it out and he read the message. Slowly, desperately slowly, the remains of passage debris that encumbered the lower part of the doorway was removed. With trembling hands, I made a tiny breach in the upper left hand corner, and then widening the hole a little, I inserted the candle and peered in. The hot air escaping from the chamber caused the flame to flicker, but presently details of the room within emerged from the mist. X, can you see anything? Q? What's all that about, you might ask? The answer is, it relates to a question that was asked by a British archaeologist when the tomb of Tutankhamun was opened in 1922. The reply to the answer was, it was wonderful. Ok, so well done to Mr. Stein who worked all that out with simple tools and his amazing brain. We imagine if 99.9% .9 of the planet were asked to solve those puzzles with nothing but a pencil and a notepad and given 10 years to do it, they would fail. If given no time frame, we imagine that they'd all complete it in the same time it would take an infinite number of monkeys to write word for word the complete works of Shakespeare. That said, now we have the software, and you can run such word puzzles through it and it'll get the job done in no time at all. You just have to figure out what cipher is being used. So the question is, how come no one has solved Puzzle 4? You think someone like Elon Musk when armed with a team of crack engineers and the best cipher software known to man could do it, but he hasn't and neither has anyone else. This is part of the last puzzle. O B K R U O X O X G H U L B E. you get it. Six years ago, a clue was given and that clue was clock. Since the fall of the Berlin Wall was happening at the time the sculpture was being built, some people think that this clock might relate to the famous Berlin clock. It's no normal clock though, and instead of using numbers, it uses sequences of colors. Each color denotes a time, so you have to read the time by looking at a sequence of colors. It all sounds very CIA. Still, the Berlin clock theory hasn't led to the solution of Puzzle 4. Clock might also relate to a method used by a Polish cryptographer to decrypt German Enigma ciphers. The famous British cryptologist Alan Turing used this kind of method to break codes. Years have passed since the clock clue was given and still, no one has figured out the hidden message. And we assure you, many people have tried. There are threads on the internet that discuss this last unsolved puzzle and people think that the reason no one can crack the code is because the cipher used is something no one has ever seen before. The CIA, the NSA, the best code breakers on the planet cannot seem to unravel this mystery. It's widely believed that to crack the complete puzzle, every message needs to be solved because each message has a clue. If puzzle 4 is not solved, then the entire puzzle cannot be solved. It's exciting to think about what it could all mean. 
The creator of the sculpture, Sandburn, is now in his 70s and is probably bored of waiting for someone to solve the puzzle. He's been interviewed and said even if he dies and no one has solved it, he has written in his will that the solution will be passed on to someone else. That of course doesn't mean that this person will give anyone else the answer, but he or she will at least be able to confirm if anyone cracks the problem. Maybe you should have a go at cracking this last code, because if you do, we have no doubt that your name will go down in history and you'll likely be given a job at the CIA. This show might have been a bit more of a strain on the brain, so we want to put you in total relaxation mode now. Have a look at these mind-relaxing videos and then take another shot at the code.